guys, Melody here from Signal, a show all about Sony's latest games, gadgets, and movies. So these days, everyone's sharing their food pictures all across the web, and let's just face it, some of them are not so good. If you really want to entice someone with a photo of food, then you need to know how to make it look appetizing. So that's why we called in an expert. Mark Matsumoto is a pro photographer whose pictures have appeared in cookbooks. He's also a private chef who's been on the Food Network, and he's been known to snap photos at restaurants all around the world. So recently, we brought Mark to San Francisco to give us some photography tips, no matter what your skill level is or even what you're shooting with. Check this out. So here we are in the Mission District in San Francisco at Delfina. This is one of the nicest restaurants in the city. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Of course. So what came first, the food geek in you or the photography geek? You know, they've actually both been a part of my life for a very long time. I started helping my mom in the kitchen when I was about four or five, and I got my first camera around then too. When I'm taking pictures of food, one of the most important things is that you've got good light. And so I like using really bright lenses like a 51.4, or I also use a 24 to 70, 2.8. You've got your own vlog about recipes and food and even photography and it's gorgeous. I love the pictures on there. So I started the vlog about four years ago and it was because I'd have friends over for dinner and they'd ask me for a recipe and I'd say, sorry man, I don't have any recipes because I, I cook improvisationally. It's been really interesting because the blog has turned into a bit of a portfolio for me and I've gotten a lot of food brands that have reached out to me to take photos of their products. Um, and I'm currently working on some cookbooks that are going to be published later this year. One of the great things is with these new point and shoots that are coming out, they're taking amazing photos. And so taking a beautiful photo of a, a piece of food is, is within the reach of anybody. All right. Well, let's get started and let's do it now. Let's do it. <laughs> So we've got a couple of colorful dishes in front of us right now, and you're going to show me how to take some pictures using your A550 right now, right? Yep. I'm going to be using my A550. It's a digital SLR, but um, these techniques are something that you can do with almost any camera. There's a couple things to think about. One of the most important things is the lighting. So we've got some nice natural daylight coming in, and as you can see, like the food looks fantastic. So we just want to like capture this. One of the things that we're, we, we're going to want to watch out for is the white balance. If you've got daylight coming in, sometimes it'll make the food look a little bit blue. Most cameras have a white balance adjustment uh, function, and you can you can use the feature on you know like a white plate or a white piece of paper, a white napkin, to set the white balance so you're not shifting like a, a warm color or a blue color. Right. Make it nice and neutral. All right. So for you know like a salad like this where it's just there isn't really a, a point of focus. It's something that I actually like shooting from overhead. So I'm just going to stand up here and get it right from above. The last angle I like to do, and this works with almost any kind of food, is doing a, a three-quarter angle. Um, 45 degrees would be something like this. Yeah. Um, and that, that really gives you a lot of flexibility, and it works with almost any kind of food. Um, the thing you want to make sure, though, is when you're composing the photo that you, you do it in an interesting way. If you just have the whole plate centered perfectly around the edges, it's going to look a little bit boring. So, you know, one of the things I like to do is hold the angle, the camera at a slight angle. And so what that does is it, it adds a little bit of drama to the shot. All right, well, not everybody has a DSLR. Most people walk around with point-and-shoot cameras yep. in their pockets. Um, so how can we get an awesome shot using a point-and-shoot? Point-and-shoots these days are awesome because they're able to do so much that you, they weren't able to do 10 years ago. Um, so you get a lot of the same cool functionality that you get in a digital SLR in a much smaller package. Yeah. So one of the things about point-and-shoots is that they usually have a macro mode. So when you're getting really close to your food and you want to just get in there and you know see that arugula, mm -hmm. you're going to want to set it to macro mode so you can get a nice close-up. So I love the WX9 because it actually has a food mode on it. And you set it to that and it really makes the colors pop, it bumps up the contrast, and it, and it makes the, the food look amazing. If I can get such a great picture out of this, um, kind of what are the drawbacks to having a point-and-shoot versus having a DSLR for food photography? One of the drawbacks is that you've got a much smaller lens on a point and shoot so it's letting a lot less light in okay. and in restaurants it can be challenging because you know today we're lucky with the nice light we have here but sometimes you're not going to have as much light right. and uh, I think for a lot of people they're tempted to use a flash but 
that's the best way to ruin a photo. Yeah. I'm not to mention you're going to disturb your neighbors in a, in a restaurant. That's true. Even if you're, if you're in a really dark place, uh, if you can hold your camera still, you can actually still take great photos without a flash. One of the things I like to do is just use what I have on hand. You know, if there's a water glass sitting around, you can set the camera right on the water glass, yeah. hold it nice and steady, and so you're able to get a great photo. So my Xperia here has uh, like a macro mode. It has the ability to change your exposure. So it has features in it. Yep. Um, so why should I use a point and shoot if this already has you know, some functionality in it? Well, cell phones these days have really great cameras in them, but uh, you're still not gonna get the same quality photo. And so if you're serious about food photography, you're gonna wanna at least carry around a point and shoot. One of the things is obviously the bigger the camera, the bigger the sensor and the bigger the lens. And so you're gonna be letting more light into the camera. So low light, uh, problems in restaurants uh, will be less of a problem with the point and shoot or better yet a DSLR. Let's do like a comparison. So I'll take a picture with my cell phone camera um, and you take a picture with yours and we'll see what it looks like. Right. Smile cake. I, I broke the rule. I centered it too much. But it still looks pretty good. Oh, but yours looks a lot better. Yeah, yeah it's got a lot more light. It's yeah. brighter. So we're kind of approaching this era of 3D photography uh -huh. uh, where people can take pictures with 3D on their cameras and yep. then view it on their 3D televisions. Uh, how do you think 3D photography impacts food photography? I think it's a really exciting time because as a food photographer, my job is to make people feel like they're in front of the food. You know, even though they may be looking on a screen, on a piece of paper, they should feel like that food is sitting in front of them and they can just pick it up and eat it. Right. And I think 3D is a great way to really put that person right there at the restaurant, yeah. sitting in front of a, a beautiful cannoli like this. Um, so let's take one more shot of our cannoli and then let's dig in. Sounds good. I'm <laughs> starving. Well, there you have it. I hope Mark's tips come in handy for you next time you're at your favorite restaurant. Now, if you're interested in checking out any of the gear he used, whether it's the Sony A550, the Cybershot WX9, or even the Xperia X10 phone, just go to sonystyle.com. And if you want to keep up with everything Sony's been up to lately, be sure to check out my full show every other week at sony.com slash signal, where you can also find our cool new free Android app. Or watch us on youtube.com slash signal, where you can leave us a comment or a question. For now, this is Melody saying thanks for watching.